Well, good morning, and, and uh, awfully excited to get going this week again. And uh, it was great being around the guys and, and to get this week started. And you know, I know I say this, but uh, to have a great week of preparation, right? And it's uh, I like the way the guys go about their business. We just gotta continue to find ways to improve, improving our preparation, improving the way we practice, and and get ourselves ready for for a great opportunity Saturday. Paul, they've got their quarterback back, but they lost some really good wide receivers last year, yet it doesn't appear that there's much of a drop off. How much, can you talk about how much stress it appears they are putting on defenses right now with everything they can do, both in the run game and spreading the field with their receivers? Yeah, I think that's the, you know, kind of in, in the question is the answer, you know, and certainly uh, he's a heck of a quarterback. And, and I think they've got a lot of good players around him, and they do a great job of of kind of threatening and using the whole field, you know, and, and do it in the in the run game, do it in the passing game. You know, a lot of respect for the coaches and, and what they do and how they do it. You know, it's it's one thing just this is their scheme, but but their players understand it and you see that and uh, and that allows them to truly go out and play. And and I think that's what they're they're doing really well. Paul, it appears as though Graham is playing some of the most consistent football of his career here to start the season. Can you share, are there a couple of areas that you think he's improved the most or where you feel like he's grown since even spring ball when you wanted to see him take a jump? Yeah, I think that he's, uh, you know, he's trusting in himself. He's trusting what he's seeing and he's he's trusting those around him, you know, and, and, um, and I think he's, you know, he's playing the game, you know, and each week uh, you're going to see something new. This week we'll see something different, and, and that's always a, a new test, new challenge. But I think if you were to su summarize it, you know, he's uh, he's playing the game right now, and and I think he's not trying to do it all on his own. He's uh, letting those around him help him, and, and that part's been good. Let's talk. Obviously, Ohio State's offense has been really high powered for the last few years. What stands out about their defense now with the new coordinator? And stuff? Yeah, I think they're. You know, one. It's obviously. You know, he's he's got a good scheme and knowing about him and and certainly respect him. But again, I go back to what we're talking about offense. The players understand. I think they play to their strengths. You know, and and they've got good players on defense. The guys that can can make plays and and. Uh, Looks to me like they they trust him to do that and put him in positions to do that, um, and so it's a it's a good good football team, you know, offensively, defensively, and you certainly see it on special teams. Paul, you've seen Ryan Day in this conference for the last you know five five years as a head coach and a couple more years as an offensive coordinator. They've obviously had a ton of talent on offense, but what's he do as a play caller that makes it tough to defend what they do? I think that uh, you know I don't know this, but. From looking at it and, and watching it, you know, I feel like you know he's got a system, you know, and there's a rhyme or reason to it. And I think that uh, certainly understands it, and the players understand it, and so can find the find the cheats. You know, if you're doing something to to take away something or make it harder on something, that he he knows where the where the cheats are. It's you know, again, it's uh, it's just sound, really good football. And I think, you know, credit to him, I think that's what's impressive is that um, I think that's that's what he allows them to do, and he, he's built it so they can do that. Paul, after the, the Washington State game, when we talked to Jim Leonard, he, he talked about how Washington State stressed the defense, you know, putting guys in space, one-on-one -on -one yeah. tackles. It, does Ohio State do the same thing to people, and do you think you're, you guys are better prepared having faced Washington State because of that? Yeah, I think, you know, are we – Better prepared. I mean, I think experiences help you certainly, and um, you know, I think that they do do a good job of because they can make you defend the whole field, and and there is you know get good players, and so there's a good threat, you know, in the passing game, you know, all across the field and and in the run game. So I think in 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 those ways, yeah, they are they have the ability absolutely to. To stress you, and 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 when they do, you know, when the when the ball declares, we gotta get as many hats to it as we can, 
but you've also got a responsibility and you got to play your responsibility. You got to trust that the other guys are doing theirs. And then when, when it declares, you got to get as many hats to the ball as we can. Paul, with the tight ends, uh, you know, with Clay and, and Hayden getting some touches through receptions, th you know, obviously with Graham too, they're, they're all roommates. How does that dynamic as roommates, how can't, you know, from your experience as a player as an all, also a coach, how does that influence the dynamic between them on the field, if any? You know, I, I think that, you know, certainly w when you, uh, when you room together, you, you've got a, uh, a closeness and yet, um, I know there's a lot of guys that don't room together that are certainly close and, and what you want to do is you want to play with guys you care about and, and guys that you can trust. And, and so whether it's specifically like you're mentioning, you know, when you room with them, I think there certainly is that component to it, but I think it's, uh, it goes bigger than that too. Paul, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Strauss obviously been a, been a guy that's you know defenses have, have had a hard time getting a hold of. I guess just can you speak to you know what's going to be key to at least making him it a little uncomfortable uh, when when you guys face and what's going to kind of go into that? Yeah, I mean it. it uh, a lot of times it comes down to you, you've got to you got to execute and you got to play. You know, and and, and every game and this game is no different. There's going to be uh, a lot of one on one battles and can you win those one on ones and, and that's I think what it comes down to and, and I think I don't care you know we're asked about Graham you talk about you know CJ any quarterback that has time and is comfortable it's a, the, the world's a little bit easier for him you know and so I think it comes down to you, you know every, all 11 guys got to got to do their part and and someone's going to in those moments, someone's got to win the matchup. Paul, we've seen you guys with Jim putting him in the slot. And it seems like in football in general, better receivers are, or maybe different size receivers are playing in the slot more often. What are some of the advantages that you've found over the years of having a receiver that's maybe not that smaller, quick guy in the slot that used to be that way? Just what are some of the advantages of mixing it up in there? Yeah, I think that it. Uh, Probably could be a lot. I mean, you know, the historically you had, you know, could you get a, a guy that's got real quick feet and can he separate? And you, and you certainly still value that. Um, and then I think you look for, you know, a guy that can can handle that, you know. And and there's a, you know, so much on everyone's plate. And you know, who's the guy that feels comfortable in there and, and kind of has an idea? And I think experience helps you. Kind of with uh, understanding spacing and, and understanding, um, you know, zones and, and the holes and and how do you win on different leverages and in man to man and and so I think that you know a big part of it is how do you get experience in there you know and, and guys that can that are equipped to to deal with a number of different things that you see. Kind of following up on that, I mean, after last season you lost Jake at tight end, you lost two really good wide receivers. And Chim was your only experienced receiving threat coming back. Did you have questions or concerns coming in? You know, who's going to step up for us? How are we able to spread the ball around it? And what have you seen, uh, again, only through three games? Right. I think you're always, uh, anytime that you've, you've got a, a, you know there's going to be new faces. There's, uh, there's certainly, you know, we've been around them, and, and they hadn't necessarily had a lot of game experience. But you were able to tell and, and – and know what they were capable of, and and then it's, you know, you want to see then how they handle different moments. You know, how do you handle um, spring ball? And then it goes, to, you know, what can you learn from spring and and work on in the summer? And then you know, how did they grow from spring to fall camp? And then, you know, what situations you have in fall camp? And now that we've got some games under their belt. Right, you're, you're just continuing to keep finding out about um, guys that, that haven't played a lot in games. And, and I've always liked the way the group has worked. And, and Elvis has done a nice job of, of coaching them and helping them. And, and so I think that you're, you're uh, you know, it's, now it's been good to start to see, you start to get enough uh, background on them, enough game experience that I believe they can all contribute in a lot of ways. I feel like they've all done some good, and I think there's all 
for all of them, there's still room for growth, and we just got to keep growing. Two-part question on Isaac Arendo. Um, is his performance so far maybe giving you, you're giving consideration to get him more involved? And also, how's his speed? Is it back to where it was? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I've appreciated what, what Isaac's done, you know, to, to get himself here. And, and absolutely, I think, you know, what he's done has been, I've been really, really happy for him and happy for our team to see you know, I think he's playing with confidence and, and certainly, you know, especially a guy coming off an injury, you, you sometimes wonder on the physicality part of it. And and from the first day that he went, you know, didn't question that at all. And 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 I think that his speed is is coming. You know what I mean? I think it's all that. I don't know. And, and uh, he, he's he's looked good. And I think that, he, you know, there's certainly a guy that, that we trust and, and you want in no matter what type of situation it is. You've mentioned Graham, but I was wondering the relationship with Bobby, how has that kind of been a factor, and how did you kind of see that relationship develop over the course of the offseason heading into the year? Yeah, no, I think it's been very positive, and, and certainly, uh, you know, I know that Graham has, Graham has always wanted anything that can be of help, you know, and, and uh, will take the time and is uh, – is open for any any interaction, and some of it has to deal with directly with football, and some pertains probably is applicable to football, and some probably not at all. And, the, and I think the same can be said about Bobby. You know, any way that he can help, and uh, I think it's been very positive. Paul, with with you talking about Isaac earlier, but looking at Braylon and Chez and. Isaac as a trio they've all had varying degrees of success this season already just how are you seeing them bond or work off each other whether it's success or even on the sideline if there's feedback to be given about what they see or don't see yeah no I think they're uh they're truly <clears throat> they're they're in it together and and it, they will help each other in every possible way I think that they all believe that they can uh complement each other you know I think all three are, are different and I think they recognize that and kind of value that and I think all three realize too that uh, when all three of them are on we're a better team. Paul do you enter this week thinking you might do that same right side rotation on the offensive line or is it just kind of depend how practice goes this week? Yeah I think a big part of it is you know practice you know and, and uh, we're able to get you know, more practice with, you know, certainly Bort. You know, he was limited early and kind of kept coming, so that'll that'll help there. And, and I think, you know, same we said with kind of where we're at with the kicking situation. Any of those, you know, that are kind of tied in with an injury, you, you kind of want to see how the week plays out. All right. Sorry, Paul. I know, like, in the spring, Bob Bosta had talked about kind of trying to home in each lineman into a particular spot, but with Trey Wadig and just how he's been able to be utilized, you know, second-team center, but also he was at right tackle and he's played the guard spots. Just what does that speak to Trey and his willingness to do what's needed on the line, but also his versatility? Yeah, I think just that. You know I mean? He is, one, he's willing, and two, he's capable, and – Probably most importantly is that I don't think that it's been negatively affecting him. You know, that uh, you never want to be uh, jack of all trades, master of none. You know, and I think he, his demeanor is such that he's able to, uh, to truly focus in and, and uh, doesn't get too caught up in kind of where am I at. And, and he can still kind of hone in on the, the, the fundamentals that are applicable. Certainly they're different, right? When you're playing center, it's different. Uh, than a tackle and, and you know in camp he's played guard I mean there's a lot of things he can do and, and I think that's also um, you know he, part of the reason why he's put himself in that position is he is capable of that and he has been playing uh, playing well for us in, in many instances and therefore you know when you, you go to it we want to have as much as you can you'd love to have stability across the board but you also want to have the ability to get your best players on the field, and I think he's kind of truly in the in the middle of all that, right? He's he's a player that's earned his 
himself a right to be playing, and in the times it comes at different spots.